Alright guys, enough setting everything up. We can now get into learning the less syntax. Now, I'm starting with just a blank website, like the most bare bones one you can have. Here it is. Look how awesome this looks right now. And uh, let's just go ahead and make some content. I'm going to make like a heading one. And I'll just be like, uh, Bucky's Landscaping. So, I don't know, maybe that's a business I'm starting out and I'm going to have a paragraph in it too. And this is going to be like, I love to mow lawns. Alright, so we need to style this because, I mean, right now, look how ugly this is. So, we're going to link it to a style sheet and I'm probably going to only have one style sheet in this entire tutorial series. So, in order to add a style sheet, R-E-L, style sheet, and I'm just going to call mine main.css. Alright, so it's linking to a style sheet called main.css, but I didn't create this main.css file yet. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this and add a new file, and this is going to be called main.less. Now remember, I'm linking to the CSS because browsers only understand CSS, but I'm going to be creating this .less file. And the reason I do this is because, remember, what that um, translator does that compiler is it takes this less file and converts it in the CSS behind the scenes so we're only going to be writing code in here but our translator or compiler it takes care of the rest and actually if you expand this in uh, JetBrains IDEs at least you can see the CSS file that it gets translated to so enough of me talking let's go ahead and start styling it so the first thing I want to do is this I know that I'm going to be using a fancy green color a lot because this is a landscaping company. Now instead of just writing, you know, the value like 009900 anytime I want to use that color, I'm going to store that color inside a variable and that's going to make it reusable however many times I want. So in order to make variables or placeholders, use the at sign and then type whatever you want your variable to be named. I'm going to name mine grass because I don't know, it reminds me of green. And this thing right here is kind of annoying. That's just uh, showing you, hey, we're trying to translate this in the CSS and this isn't actual less because I'm not done freaking typing it yet, but you know. All right. So type your variable name, colon, and then the value of whatever that variable is. So anytime I use this variable, what less is going to do is it's going to plug in this value. So now I can just write it like normal CSS. So in heading one, I'll change the color. Now, right here, where I would typically write some hex, I would write grass. And let me just uh, add another one. So font, family, I'll put like a Tahoma and sans serif. So you can actually mix this in with standard CSS and also fancy less. So let me do the same for a paragraph so I can show you guys how handy this is actually. And boom, there you go. So again, what less is going to do is it's going to go through your CSS right here. And any time it sees a variable, it's going to say, okay, you want to use this value. Same with here. And actually, if we look at the CSS file, that's what it translated to. Boom to boom. So if I look at my website, look at that. But you know what? Um, even though that you know green is supposed to remind me of grass, I really want this blue. So instead of going through and changing this to blue and this to blue like I would have to if I was just working with plain old CSS, with less, all I have to do is this. Change it in one location and since these are variables, placeholders, it automatically gets updated across my entire CSS file. You guys are loving this already, aren't you? And boom, look at that. Everything's blue. Now, already you can see how handy this is because if you ever designed a website before, you know that you just don't have these colors in two locations. On my website, the color themes I have, I use the same color in like probably a hundred or more locations. So how much faster is this going to be than you know going through manually and the last thing I want to um, mention before I let you guys go whenever I'm just teaching this I'm probably going to use weird names but you never want to name this something like um, green so 
for example, if you just named it green, like this, then what happens when you decide to change this color to blue? Well, all your variables are going to be named green and it's going to be confusing. So you never want to name it what the property is. Like you never want to name it a specific color. You want to name it something like border color or um, paragraph backgrounds or something like that. What it is, not what it's equal to. So, you know, use good naming conventions and that is how you use variables and trust me there's a lot more to cover unless if you guys fell in love with that already I don't blame you wait to see what's coming up next